Hey, folks. So let me lay it straight for you. I've always had a thing for history, the kind that sends shivers down your spine, the kind that whispers from the shadows when you're all alone on a cold, dark night. You see, growing up in Salem, Massachusetts, you're never just a kid. You're a living chapter in an endless tale of mystery and dread. In Salem, history clings to the air like fog, thick and unyielding, a constant reminder of the darkness that once engulfed this town. Now I've been a history buff since I could walk, drawn to the tales of old, the kind that feel too real to be just stories, the kind that make you glance over your shoulder just to be sure you're still alone. My family, well, they've been in Salem since the days when witch trials were more than just a grim chapter in a history book. They were reality. And with a lineage like that, you can bet your bottom dollar we've got skeletons in our closets. Tales that have been passed down like a cursed heirloom, shrouded in whispers and wary glances. There was one story, though, that always seemed to stand out from the rest. It was the kind of story that we only spoke about during the dead of night, when the wind howled like the damned and shadows danced on the walls. I thought it was just that. A story, a way to scare the kids into bed. But oh, how wrong I was. It all started on a particularly bleak autumn day. The kind where the sun seems just a myth, and the chill wraps around you like a vice. Driven by a restless curiosity, I decided to brave the dust and ghosts of the family attic. There's something about old attics, isn't there? They're like gateways to the past, filled with forgotten memories and relics left behind by those who've long since turned to dust. Amidst the clutter and cobwebs, something caught my eye. A journal, old and worn, its leather cover cracked and faded, as if it had weathered centuries of storms. It was hidden beneath a stack of antique, yellowing books, like a secret begging to be uncovered. As I reached for it, a shiver ran down my spine, an unexplained sense of dread. But my curiosity was a raging fire that not even the chill of fear could extinguish. The journal fell open to the first page, the handwriting old-fashioned and elegant, yet tinged with an urgency that seemed to transcend time. It belonged to an ancestor of mine, a name whispered in hushed tones during family gatherings, shrouded in a cloak of mystery and taboo. As I began to read, the attic around me seemed to grow colder, the shadows darker, as if the very act of reading was awakening something long dormant. The entry started innocently enough, detailing daily life in Salem, the mundane tasks of a bygone era. But as the pages turned, the tone shifted. My ancestor wrote of strange occurrences, unexplained events that had the town whispering of witchcraft. She spoke of the fear that gripped Salem, a palpable terror that turned neighbor against neighbor, friend against friend. But it was the undercurrent of something else that gripped me, a personal vendetta simmering beneath the surface a hatred so visceral it seemed to leap from the page. My ancestor believed in witches, not as mere superstition, but as a stark reality. She spoke of one witch in particular, a being of immense power and malice, whose very existence threatened to tear apart the fabric of their reality. As the rain began to pelt against the attic windows, the world outside reduced to a blur of grey. I was pulled deeper into the tale, each word a chain wrapping tighter and tighter around me. I was no longer just a reader, I was a participant in a saga of darkness and vengeance that stretched across the centuries. Little did I know, this was just the beginning. By opening that journal, by delving into the shadows of the past, I was about to unearth secrets that should have remained buried, to stir the embers of a curse that had lain dormant biding its time until the right descendant came along to reawaken its dark hunger. Inside the musty pages of the ancient journal, the looping script told of days long past but never forgotten, of a time when superstition ruled and fear was a constant companion. As I sat in the dim light of the attic, the words seemed to rise and take form around me, creating a world where the line between reality and nightmare was as thin as a witch's whisper. The more I read, 
the clearer it became that my ancestor was not just an observer of the witch trials, but an active participant, driven by a dark obsession that consumed her every waking moment. She wrote of the hysteria that gripped Salem, of the screams that echoed through the night as another soul was condemned, of the fire that danced in the eyes of the self-righteous as they proclaimed their twisted justice. But it was her fixation on one figure in particular that sent chills down my spine, a woman known throughout Salem not by name, but by the fear she inspired, the shadow she cast. This woman, my ancestor claimed, was the true embodiment of witchcraft, a mistress of the dark arts whose very presence was a blight upon the land. She was described not as a human being, but as a specter of malice and power, a creature that could chill the blood with a glance and whisper curses that twisted reality itself. The entries detailed my ancestors' relentless pursuit of this witch, driven not by a desire for justice, but by a personal vendetta that seemed to transcend reason. She spoke of nights spent hidden in the shadows, of rituals witnessed under the light of a blood-red moon, of incantations that crawled under the skin and whispered of unspeakable things. It became disturbingly clear that my ancestor's obsession had led her down dark paths to practices that blurred the lines between hunter and hunted. She wrote of gathering her own circle, of delving into forbidden texts, of calling upon forces that no mortal should ever disturb. Her quest for vengeance had become a descent into madness, a journey from which there was no return. As I delved deeper into the journal, the air around me seemed to grow heavier, as if the very shadows were leaning in to listen. I could almost hear the crackle of the fire as another accused witch was led to the gallows, the hushed murmurs of the crowd as they watched the flames rise, the despairing cries that were drowned out by the roar of righteous fury. My ancestors' descriptions became more frenzied, more erratic, as if the very act of recounting her experiences was fracturing her mind. She spoke of confrontations shrouded in shadow, of curses that clawed their way out of dreams to tear at the flesh, of a final desperate plan to rid Salem of its blight once and for all. But it was the last entries that froze the blood in my veins. Written in a trembling hand, they told of a final, fateful encounter, of a circle of power broken, of a darkness unleashed that was too vast, too ancient to ever be contained again. My ancestors' last words were not of triumph, but of terror a chilling realization of the true nature of the force she had sought to oppose. I should have closed the book then, should have left the shadows of the past undisturbed. But it was too late. I had been drawn into the story, entangled in the web of fate my ancestor had woven with her own madness and despair. The journal had become more than just a relic of the past. It was a warning, a testament to the darkness that lies waiting for those who dare to call it forth. As the final words of the journal faded before my eyes, I knew that the story was far from over. The past was not just calling out to me, it was reaching out across the centuries to claim what had been awakened. And I, fool that I was, had opened the door. As I continued to pore over the ancient journal, the musty scent of the attic seemed to become infused with an air of menace. The words of my ancestor painted a world consumed by paranoia and fear a community ensnared by the cold grip of the witch trials. But within these pages, a more personal horror was unfolding, one that began with a vendetta and spiraled into an abyss of darkness. My ancestors' writings, once coherent and detailed, became more erratic as the witch's curse seeped into her life. She spoke of omens that filled her days and nightmares that haunted her nights, of shadows that moved on their own and whispers that echoed from empty rooms. The boundary between reality and the cursed realm she had invoked began to blur, the air around her charged with an unseen malevolence. The curse, as she described it, was not merely an act of vengeance from the accused witch. It was a living, breathing entity, a malignant force that sought to corrupt and destroy everything it touched. It began with small, inexplicable occurrences. Milk soaring overnight, livestock found lifeless with no mark upon them, crops withering in fields that were once fertile, 
but it was the changes in the townspeople that were most alarming. Friends and neighbors turned against each other, their eyes filled with suspicion and hatred. Accusations flew like sparks in dry timber, igniting a fire of hysteria that swept through Salem, consuming the guilty and innocent alike. My ancestor watched as the community she knew disintegrated into madness, all the while knowing that the true source of this calamity was the curse she had unwittingly unleashed. Her desperation grew with each passing day as she sought a way to break the curse, delving deeper into forbidden knowledge, engaging in rituals that defied the natural order. The journal detailed these dark practices with a trembling hand, the ink smeared as if by tears. She spoke of nights spent in graveyards, of conjuring spirits that were better left undisturbed, of sacrifices made under the pale light of the moon. The toll of the curse was evident in her deteriorating health. She described her reflection in the mirror, how her once vibrant eyes now looked back at her, hollow and haunted. Her sleep was plagued by visions of the witch, her laughter a sinister echo that seemed to come from within her very soul. She wrote of a growing sense of doom, a feeling that the curse was closing in, tightening around her like a noose. The entries became more disjointed, filled with pleas for forgiveness, and passages from the Bible scrawled in a frantic attempt to ward off the darkness. She recounted a particularly harrowing night when the wind rose to a howl, and she saw the specter of the witch outside her window, her face twisted in a malevolent grin, her finger pointing directly at her as if sealing her fate. As I turned the final pages of the journal, the words faded to an almost illegible scrawl. The last entry was nothing but a desperate prayer, a final futile appeal to a higher power to lift the curse that had destroyed her life and doomed her lineage. The ink was smudged, as though the pen had been dropped in a moment of utter despair. I closed the journal, the silence of the attic oppressive, the shadows seeming to press in around me. The curse, a tale of caution turned into a nightmare, had transcended generations, a malevolent thread woven into the fabric of my family's history. And now it was clear that this dark legacy had been passed down to me, an unwelcome inheritance that chilled me to the bone. As I sat there in the gathering gloom, the reality of my situation became starkly clear. The curse was not just a story, it was real, as tangible as the journal in my trembling hands. And by delving into the past, by unearthing this dark chapter, I had unwittingly drawn the curse closer, stepping into the same shadows that had consumed my ancestor. As the chilling truth settled over me like a shroud, the once familiar attic seemed to morph into a realm of shadows and whispers. The air, thick with the musty odor of decay, felt as if it pressed against my skin, a tangible reminder of the curse that now loomed over my existence. I tried to convince myself it was just the aftermath of the story, the psychological remnants of a tale too sinister to be merely ink on paper. But deep down, a primal part of me knew the haunting had transcended the pages. It had become my reality. Initially, I dismissed the cold drafts and flickering lights as quirks of the old house. I rationalized the strange noises and shifting shadows as the products of an overactive imagination fueled by the haunting narrative. But denial could only take me so far. The turning point came one silent, oppressive night when the line between the rational and the supernatural blurred beyond recognition. It started subtly, with a feeling of being watched. The sensation wasn't new. After all, the attic was a place of family history, filled with the remnants of lives long past. But this was different. This was a gaze that clawed at the edges of my consciousness, cold and malicious. Ignoring it, I attempted to immerse myself in mundane activities, but the feeling intensified, growing into an oppressive dread that hovered just out of sight. Then came the whispers. At first, they were so faint I thought they were just breezes through the cracked windows or the old house settling into the earth. But they grew louder, clearer, forming words that were too distorted to understand but filled with unmistakable malice. The air around me grew colder, and for the first time since reading the journal, I felt a presence, an entity that was intruding upon the physical world with malevolent intent. 
One night, the whispers grew so insistent that I could no longer ignore them. I searched the house, moving from room to room, trying to locate the source, but found nothing. When I returned to my bedroom, the temperature dropped sharply, a sign I had come to associate with the unwanted visitor from the past. Then, the most terrifying manifestation of the curse revealed itself. My beloved cat, Mr. Whiskers, who had always been the embodiment of calm and comfort, suddenly arched his back, his fur standing on end as he hissed at a dark corner of the room, an empty corner where nothing should have been able to provoke such a reaction. His eyes were wide with fear, fixated on something unseen, something that filled even him with terror. It was at that moment I realized the full extent of the curse's reach. It wasn't confined to the pages of the journal or locked away in history. It was active, living, breathing. It was in my home, a malevolent force that not only I could feel but that my cat could see. The following days were a blur of sleepless nights and anxious days. Objects began to move inexplicably, disappearing only to be found in impossible places. Shadows danced at the edge of my vision, skittering away when I tried to look directly at them. The house, once a place of comfort and family, had become a prison, each creak and whisper a reminder of the ancestral curse that clung to my lineage. Desperate for respite, I reached out to local historians and occult experts, delving into research in a frantic search for a way to break the curse. But the more I uncovered, the more I realized that some doors, once opened, cannot be closed. The curse had been set in motion centuries ago, a malignant cycle of fear and darkness that had now ensnared me. As I stood in the dim light of dawn, watching the shadows recede but knowing they would never fully disappear, I understood that escaping the curse was not a matter of logic or reason. It was a battle for my very soul. A fight against a darkness that had consumed my ancestor and now sought to claim me as its next victim. As the days turned to weeks, the once vibrant world I knew dimmed under the weight of the ancestral curse. My home, once a sanctuary of warmth and memories, had transformed into a mausoleum of whispers and shadows. The relentless presence that haunted the edges of my consciousness grew bolder, its intentions clear, and its malice palpable. I was living in a state of siege, each moment tainted by the dread of unseen forces circling ever closer. The curse, a malevolent thread woven through the fabric of my family's history, had ensnared me with a grip as cold as the grave. My attempts to find a solution, to sever the ties that bound me to this ancient vendetta, proved futile. Historians offered sympathy but no solutions. Occult experts spoke in vague terms of rituals and rites, but nothing that could break the chains of a curse centuries in the making. Sleep became a distant memory, a forgotten luxury. My nights were filled with nightmares, visions of my ancestor's tormented spirit, her eyes hollow with despair, her voice a whispered plea for forgiveness. She was trapped caught in the eternal grip of the witch's vengeance, and now, so was I. The boundary between dreams and reality blurred until I could no longer tell where one ended and the other began. In my deepest heart, I knew there was only one path left to me. The curse was fueled by silence, by the shadows of unspoken fears. If there was any hope of breaking its hold, I had to expose it to the light share the burden that had been born in silence for too long. It was a desperate thought, born of sleepless nights and whispered fears, but it was all I had left. With a trembling hand I began to document my story, recording every detail of the curse that had woven its dark threads through my life. The words flowed from me, a torrent of fear and desperation, but as they did, a strange sense of relief began to take hold. It was as if each word, each confession lifted a part of the darkness that had settled over my heart. But even as I wrote, I knew the risk I was taking. To share the story was to spread the curse, to entangle others in the web that had ensnared my family for generations. It was a choice that haunted me, the moral weight of the decision pressing down with every word I wrote. But in the end, the need to break the cycle, to prevent the curse from claiming another soul, 
outweighed the guilt. And so I share this tale with you, not as a warning, but as a plea. A plea for understanding, for solidarity against the darkness that lurks in the corners of history and bloodlines. I do not ask for forgiveness, nor do I ask for salvation. I only ask that you remember that you speak of the shadows not with fear, but with defiance. For in the telling there is power, in the sharing there is hope. Perhaps together we can break the chains of the past, shatter the hold of curses whispered in the dark. But remember, as you read these words the shadows listen, and the curse like a story seeks new souls to ensnare.